Hi, my name is Jeff Davies, and I'm on the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. Today, we're going to go over Lab 4, which has to do with compute instances, how to create a compute instance, how to install software, how to really make it usable. So to do this, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to jeffdavies.org, where I maintain uh, a website with a bunch of these labs. And you're going to want to click on this OCI Test Drive Labs 100, which is a set of labs. I'm going to open that in a new tab. Click on that new tab. Scroll down to the README file. It's going to take you to GitHub. Click on this link here where it says Lab 100-Lab. Don't click on the folder up here. Click on this one. And you're going to navigate down to Compute. Go ahead and click on that and that will take you to the lab that we're just about to do now. So a number of things we're going to have to do here. First, with the prerequisites, you want to be sure that you have an Oracle Cloud Infrastructure account if you are following along. Uh, you can go to oracle.com and register for an account there for free. Gives you 30 days or so, $300 credit, plenty uh, of credits for what you need. And then you are good to go. So for us, the first thing we're going to need to do is to generate some SSH keys. And generating SSH keys on a Mac or a Linux box is dead simple. If you're running Windows, then I highly recommend you download and install Git Bash because it will allow you to follow along. It sets up sort of a, a Linux-like environment on Windows. But I'm running Mac, so I'm just going to use SSH keygen. And so I'll bring this up. Now I'm already in my home folder slash dot SSH. It's a hidden folder. Um, and I also already have an ID RSA pub. Uh, or in other words, more, more plain language, I already have an SSH key. So I'll create another key and we're going to do SSH dash key gen because that's the name of the tool. And then when it comes up, and this will be the same if you install Git Bash on Windows, the exact same process. It's going to offer to overwrite this ID RSA. I don't want that, so I say, um, I'll call it OCI key. This is going to vary a little bit from the written part of the lab, but that's okay. I'm going to skip the passphrase for now, skip it again, and it's going to, boom, create it. So if I do a, uh, an ls, you can see I now have an OCI key, which is my private key, and an OCI underscore key dot pub, which is the public key. We'll need these in just a little bit. Now, if you scroll a little further down, I have a note in here that says, you know, these uh, this SSH key is fine for our purposes in a test drive or if you're just playing around. If you want to create a, a key for a production environment, I provide commands here to do that where you're using... Uh, 4K bits instead of just 2K. You should have a, a, a passphrase for it and then create whatever key you want. And it's going to be up to you and your organization to be able to manage those keys going forward. So now we're going to start about creating a web server on a compute instance. And to do this, the first thing we're going to need to do is to log into the Oracle Cloud. And to do that, we're going to open up a new tab. I'm going to say oracle.com. And then when it loads up, we're going to go to View Accounts and then Sign In to Cloud. Once again, this assumes you already have a trial account or a real account with Oracle. It's going to ask you for your account name, which is also called a tenancy name. Now, when you log in, you're most likely going to log in using this portion here. Since I'm using an Oracle instance, and I'm an Oracle employee, I'm going to log in with the Oracle SSO. All right, so once you're logged in, it's going to take you to this uh, landing page here. And let's go check the lab real quick. So the first thing it wants us to do, we talk a little bit about the difference between a bare metal machine, which we will not use for this. Um, we'll focus on using a virtual machine instead. So from the landing tab, we're going to create a new compute instance and we're going to name it web server. So we go home, click on the hamburger menu, compute instances. 
And when that comes up, we're going to create inner demo compartment. So make sure the compartment is demo. It's one that we created in the very first lab. I'm going to say create instance. And we're just going to call it web server. OK. Now we're going to keep the Oracle Linux 7.7. .7. You can change it to something else if you like. We're going to make sure that we show the network shape and all that sort of good stuff because we want to make sure we can assign a public IP address. This can be very important because you're going to SSH into this compute instance. Uh, so you're going to have to be able to hit a public IP address. So we got that. Uh, our shape is already being shown. So all this is already shown for us. By default, assign a public IP address is selected. It also gives us a public subnet. Make sure that is uh, already chosen for you. We can skip the boot volume. We'll just use the keys. So down here it says we're going to need some uh, an SSH key file where it's going to want our public key. And I'm just going to browse to that. Remember that lives in the .ssh folder. And for this one, I'm going to select, well, I'll select my normal one, I guess. Um, this way you can follow along with me and do it exactly the same way as opposed to doing the, using this other key. doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay, so you've got that. And we'll check show advanced options. I don't think we need anything here. Management, networking, that's all uh, much more advanced topics that we don't need for now. So we'll say create. And this will create a compute instance. Think of a compute instance as just a server, basically. So it's going to create one for us called web server. It'll take a couple seconds to come up. This area here will turn green when the instance is ready to be used. So in the meantime, just be a moment, we'll go back and check our lab. And once that's up, we're going to want to SSH into the public uh, IP address of the instance. And now you can see it's turned green. And we have a public IP address here. I'm going to copy that. And if you go back to the lab, it will show you the command to actually uh, SSH into that instance. So here we're going to type in this command here. For, for me, SSH OPC is the username at, and then the public IP address. All right, it's gonna prompt you if you wanna trust this, say yes. And now we are SSH'd into the instance. So the first thing we're going to do is this command here, sudo yum install httpd. Now, by the way, if you're not using Oracle Linux, if you're using something like Ubuntu, check out my medium.com um, channel, for lack of a better word, because I do have instructions that are specific to Ubuntu 18. But for us, we're going to just do it here. I say sudo yum install httpd space dash y. This is going to install Apache for us, the Apache web server. So this will just take a, a couple seconds, really, maybe 30 seconds to uh, complete the main installation on the system. There we go. It's all done. Now we want to be able to start Apache. So we're going to say sudo apache control start and that's it started so let's then say sudo system control enable httpd i always check for my typos cuz i am the king of typos Okay, so that did two things. 
that starts the Apache server and then it configures it to start after the system reboots. So if we need to shut this system down, this compute instance down and restart out later, uh, Apache will start automatically for us. So let's run a quick check um, to make sure that Apache is up and running fine. So we're gonna say sudo Apache control config test. Okay, and it says everything's okay. It says the syntax is okay, but it's okay. So one of the things to remember with the Oracle Cloud is that it is highly secure by default. We lock all sorts of things down. Um, the only reason we didn't lock an SSH port down on this instance is because we requested to get a public IP address. If we had not requested to get a public IP address, even SSH would be shut down for us. So there are two different areas that you're going to need to sort of unlock your system for use so that people can hit your web server. And the first one is gonna be in the firewall on this compute instance itself. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna move this over a little bit so we can see the entire command. And I'm probably just gonna copy and paste these. But here you can say we're given a firewall command, a permanent, that we're setting the zone to public and we are adding the service HTTP and then we're forcing the firewall to reload. So we'll paste that in. We get our success messages. And now at this point, we're going to want to create an index file for the web server. So And you can see this command here just creates uh, a very simple HTML file that contains uh, this message. This is my web server running on Oracle. Okay. Now, we can open our browser and navigate to that public IP address. And I've already forgotten what that was, but fortunately we'll just copy it again. We'll go to the browser. And nothing. All right. That's why in the lab it says, your browser won't return anything because port 80 was not opened up in the security list. That's the other part. So we open up the firewall in the server itself but the Oracle cloud itself is blocking traffic until you create a rule that says traffic on port 80 to this server is fine. So it's a sort of a network level rule instead of a system or a server level rule. So to do this, we're gonna go back to the Oracle menu. We're gonna click on our virtual cloud network, and then we're going to uh, create a security list for it. So let's try that now. Go back to our pancake menu. We're gonna say networking virtual cloud networks. So we're gonna click on our VCN that we created in the previous uh, lab, lab three. And we're gonna to go to the default security list for the OCI hands-on lab VCN. So we click on the default security list. We're gonna to need to open port 80 so we're gonna add an ingress rule, which means we're allowing traffic to come in on port 80. And this means from any source IP address, when it's all zeros, uh, we're allowing traffic over TCP IP, the source port range is all, the destination port range is port 80. And that's all we need to do. TCP, source port range, all destination port range, 80. Okay, so now we have a rule that allows web traffic over port 80. You can see the other rule that allows our 
SSH connection to operate uh, at all. So now let's go back to our website and boom, you can see that it now works. So our request is getting routed into the Oracle Cloud Network and ultimately routed to this particular server. And it has two security checks that it has to pass. Those security checks could be made to be much more robust, but for the purposes of this uh, demonstration in lab, it's been overkill. And then at the bottom of the lab, I have some examples, uh, just in case you have any trouble with it. There's a couple things you might want to double check. You can go ahead and double check those, but that's it. It's just that easy to create an Apache web server and get it up and running on Oracle OCI. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in Lab 5.